This video is all about how you beat Yanari. Now I'm going to be talking with Alex Harrison who has just come second place in the LVO. Now if anyone's been living under a rock, LVO is the largest tournament in the world and this year's was the biggest one which has ever been. Um, and Alex came second place with Yanari, so I'm going to be picking his brains, we're going to be talking about his list, we're going to be talking specifically how do you play against an, a, uh, a Yanari list, both his list and more generically the list which come up. Uh, and we're going to be talking ways you can get around soul bursts. Now there is so many good tips in this video, so enjoy guys. And remember, D6 Evolution is all about making you a better 40k player and we do regular tactics videos all aimed at improving your game. Welcome guys, it's Andy here from D6 Evolution, along with Alex. Hello. Now, Alex has just come back from LVO, and you did pretty well, didn't you? I did alright, I guess, just yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> so anyone who doesn't know, LVO is the second biggest tournament, well, it's the biggest tournament in the world. It is the biggest tournament now. And uh, yeah. you came second in it, didn't you buddy? I so did, congrats yes. for that. Thank you. Um, which is a major achievement. So the video today, guys, is all about how you beat Yunari. Yeah, the one if it's possible, if it's possible, <laughs> it's um, not. <laughs> so, being that Alex has done so well at LVO, I thought I'd bring him on and we'll try and get some tricks on what to do. Yeah, yeah, we'll go through a few things from armies, different builds, different builds you might see now, uh, and then try and figure out some tricks on how to beat it. <laughs> yeah. So, this is going to be absolutely awesome. So, I think first of all, should we go over your list from LVO? Yeah, so um, I, I went for something a bit different. Um, the usual sort of Yanari or Eldar list that you see in the competitive scene uh, tends to be the double spears and reapers. Yeah, yeah, I, I have faced that. Oh, well. <laughs> um, it's horrible. I think everyone around the world has seen it or played it. So I, I, I didn't feel like it was strong enough in the meta at the moment, especially in America. Um, and I felt like there was a lot of orcs and guard and stuff like that. And, and I guess the other thing, you know, once a list becomes so popular, people build to try and beat it, don't they? Yeah. So, so in a way, you, you're kind of going up against a lot of people who are, are prepared to play that game and know how to... To be honest, I, it. I didn't want to take Eldar because I personally don't like Yanari. I think they're just... <gasps> See, this is perfect. We're, we're on the same page for this video then, aren't we? So... <laughs> I, I don't... I just think... We all want Yanari to go away, but I, until that point... Yeah, we're going to show you how to beat them. <laughs> it was it, it was a, it was just a conundrum where I was like, you either join them or you don't. And I thought, well, if I'm going to such a big event, <laughs> I just caved in and thought, well, I may as well take them. <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I went with something a bit different. Um, I don't know if you're going to put a link below or, or maybe a list of the lists yeah, so you I'll, can I'll, read I'll, it. But I'll, I'll put I'll put it put it in the description. But... Yeah. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll just go through it from top to bottom. So I had a Unari battalion, uh, yeah. and that was a Farsir on a jet bike with. Oh, you get to pick your powers before the games as well, which yeah. is awesome. Um, a Warlock on bike and uh, your Vrain. So those are my three HQs. Um, and I'll go over why I picked those specifically yeah. in a bit. Uh, I then had um, two units of eight Storm Guardians, really cheap, and a unit of five Rangers. And then uh, that was that battalion. And then I had an Alatok Flyer... Um, Detachment with a hemlock and three crimson hunter exarchs. They're, they're so efficient, aren't they? Uh, so good, yeah. so good, um, and so durable. That's the durability and the minus two to hit, the twelve wounds, yeah, and the speed. Um, yeah, the firepower is decent. I wouldn't say amazing point for point, but it's just efficient. Way they're constantly shooting. Pardon it's because they're shooting all game because they don't <coughs> bloody well get. Exactly, <laughs> they're really hard to kill. Um, and then I topped it up with. Um, my detachment, which was predominantly for Vect. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just three Razor Wings. Um, now some people, like when I was discussing the list, they were yeah. like, oh, why don't you take three Ravagers and an Archon? Uh, which is a bit more points, but um, point for point, I still think the Razor Wings um, do more damage. So we were discussing this on a previous video with uh, Eric Ho from uh, Team Wales. Yeah. And he agrees with you. He thinks that actually the Razor Wings are by far the more efficient choice because yeah. I guess they're just more durable, aren't they? Yeah. You, you, can, you can put them right at the back of the board. They've got exactly. much longer range when, exactly. you, when you factor in their movement on top as well. Mm. Um, so And they can't be assaulted by most things in the game. So Yeah, Ravagers can still like get a lot of movement and shoot with the 36 inch range and the, I think it's like 14 or 16 inch move, it's, it's a big move, it mm. might even be 12, but either way it's at least 48, so, 
and they can fly. The thing is, like, once you're within 36, you know, they, they, they're very dur they're, they're not very durable, no. sorry. Um, you know, 10 wounds, 4 plus save, 5 plus vulnerable, no minuses to hit. So, if someone wants them dead, they're dead. Whereas, uh, being a fly, you can't be assaulted, you can get to exactly where you want. And they also have more shots. Uh, they don't have as many shots as a razor wing. Um, but I didn't use one of their guns at all throughout the tournament. Did you forget it existed? I forgot about the splinter rifle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and most people think, oh, well, that's not a big deal. Well, actually, having a rapid-fire splinter rifle from three flyers every turn... I'll give you an example my final game against Brandon. I never used it. So that's four poison shots each flyer, so 12 shots that I missed every turn. Yeah. And yes, I didn't have those flyers that, that, every be, turn. But that would have done nothing to guard me. Oh, no, not did, nothing no, at no, all. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually, I forgot throughout the whole tournament they even had them. And it was only until, I think there was another stream at um, Belgium where I watched Tony Chu, which I got the list idea basis from, yeah. started shooting a splinter rifle. And I was like, oh, I forgot they had that gun. <laughs> so, yeah. You see, I, I have great. that same mental block about, you know, the knight with the Gatling cannon? Yeah. It's got a flamer on it. Never. I've run in a Does bunch it? of tournaments. Yeah. I've never, ever used that thing. Oh. I've had <laughs> points for it in every tournament, but yeah. never used it. So, don't make the mistake I did. Learn your army. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so... so yeah. Let, should we t what should we talk about for that? Should we talk about generic ways of getting... Oh, um, oh. I, didn't, I didn't mention the, uh, the main part of the list. The scat bikes. Ah oh, yes, we've got I had it. I had two units of nine um, scatter laser jet bikes as well. Yeah, you started a little bit of a trend with these, haven't you? Yeah, you're gonna see a lot of them. Um, what I'll do then is I do you want me to go over the list and why I pick stuff. Yeah, T talk about that first, and then we're gonna talk a little bit more in depth about the specific units, and then we're gonna be talking about solver. So. Okay, cool. So, the reason I took what I did, so the the fast here and the 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 uh, warlock on bikes were there to sort of go where I needed them. Right, you, yeah. where you need the doom, where you need the jinx, or whatever power you give the wallet, which tended to be those two, um, they can move twenty two with the, with the six inch advance, and then plus the range of the power. It meant that wherever I wanted them to go, they could hit with those powers, and that was really important. Some people take Eldrad or a faster on foot; they're just not fast yeah. enough to get that doom where you need. Um, because the the powers are twenty four inches, aren't they? Jinx is eighteen, yep. and doom is twenty four. Yeah. yeah, so it's actually quite short range, isn't it? So yeah fairly short so you need that movement whereas if the farseer or the warlock is on foot you're not getting that movement yeah so, um, that they, they really just make your army just so much more efficient don't they oh god yeah having doom and jinx in any eldari army <laughs> just makes everything amazing, amazing. Just, yeah <laughs> as everyone knows like when they play against even a dark eldar soup someone will just put doom and jinx in there just to make the army so much more <laughs> efficient um, so that's the reason I took those on bikes. Yeah. And then obviously you've rain for the soul burst power predominantly, and having plus one to cast is brilliant. Um, even a smite on a four is nice to have. She's fairly durable. Uh, the only thing is you get a rubbish wall trait. Um, nothing interesting there, but then the brakes. Um, and the main reason for having the soul burst was for the scat bikes. So I'll move on to them. The reason I took them was because of all the guards and what I felt was orcs that was going to hit the scene. Yeah. I, I thought scat bikes had gone the way of the drop pod, but, but well, I think they it... disappeared. Yeah. <laughs> they did. Yeah, they did. Yeah. And uh, when I tried, to, I actually borrowed some off a, a guy called Frank from America, and I didn't get them until I got there <laughs> because no one had any scat bikes. Everyone had converted their scat bikes. Put a on them, yeah. Literally, yeah. everyone I spoke to that I knew that played Eldar in 7th edition when they were using scat bikes, or 6th edition, whatever it was, had converted them or, or sold them. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh. And I had a load. I just didn't know where they were. I couldn't find them for the life of me. So, um, yeah, I basically brought them out because of the uh, points drop. They got points drop in uh, Chapter Approved. They're only 27 points each for a two-wound, 16-moving model. Um, toughness 4... And yeah. a four shot strength six shot. Um, yeah, I was going to say, you better say what they do because no one's actually played against them in this edition. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. poor opponents in the LBO. Yeah, yeah. Well, everyone was surprised, you know, when they saw my list and they were like, oh, okay, there's, there must be some tricks here. It wasn't a, that part of the list wasn't tricksy apart from some of the stratagems you can yeah. do. Um, what did catch some people off was the fire and fade mechanic, which everyone's used to seeing on Dark Reapers. But they forget that actually jet bikes can do it as well. Yeah. So having jet bikes bounce back and forward behind a wall was massive yeah um, and it caught a lot of people off and and the 16 inch movement plus the 36 inch range meant that they were hitting you wherever you were pretty much on the board yeah and with 36 in, uh, 36 shots a squad 
Soul Bursting for 72, Guided. It's a lot of shots. And Doom, you know, just... Just just, just, for just because you can, yeah. <laughs> Um, so they're also really good board control, um, so if you're worried about deep striking units, things like that, um, you can cover the board with 18 bikes to stop them getting to my characters if I'm worried about um, yeah. losing my ground forces. But um, they're just really survivable because you can just bring them out of line of sight after you shoot them, isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. And even if you let you leave them, they're still toughness for two wounds, so you have to commit some decent shooting, and because of their range, it needs to be good shooting. You yeah. can also, um, when I didn't need Jinx, I was protecting them, so there were a 3 plus save, in cover, 2 plus save, so they're not easy to get rid of, yeah. um, surprisingly. Um, so yeah, that was the, the jet bikes. Yeah, And you had two units of those? Two units of nine. Yeah. Um, the main reason was redundancy, so one would get the guide and soul burst, the other would just get reroll ones from your brain. Yeah. Um, and they do okay damage, that, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, but they hit on fours when they move, and it's like, well... That's why you have lots of dice. You know, you have a bucket of dice. <laughs> yeah. Thirty-six shots hitting on fours, reroll ones. You still get about like eighteen, nineteen hits from the squad yeah. that's rerolling ones. And the guided squad, you're still getting like twenty-five hits. So still a lot of shots. Double, double shooting, wounding, toughness three on twos. Um, yeah, I think strength, strength six is six is just that efficient. Isn't oh, it's. It? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't say it's the perfect strength. I'd probably say no, I mean, seven. Obviously, you want it strength fifteen. Of course, 16, yeah. of course. Yeah. Um, but it wounds everything on fives. Yeah. It wounds most things on threes. And the main main reason I actually took them was I was expecting a lot of grotesques as well. And the difference between strength five and six is massive when you're trying to wound grotesques. Yeah. Massive. Um, so winning on fours against grotesques with doom, jinx, you know, in there, <laughs> yeah. um, is really efficient. So yeah, that was my sort of process when building them. Um, and obviously the anti-horde, which was lacking in the list. Um, going back to the troops. Yeah. Um, two units of Storm Guardians. Again, people are like, what's the point in them? You get 16 bodies for less than about, what is it, 48, 96 points. So less than 100 points, you get 16 bodies. That's good. That's, it's good for board control. It's good for objectives. Exactly. It's, That's all uh, it is. Ablative wounds, you know, particularly when you go to, again, smite spam, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's It's good. just... Bodies that you can throw forward and block things, you know, coming around from the board edges or deep striking mm. um, through dark matter crystal or things like that. Yeah. Um, and they're alright in combat. They get two attacks each. Strength four, I think. No, they're strength three. Mm. Um, you know, it's just weight And attacks. if you ever kill anything from it, it's just brilliant. So oh, yeah. Like, I, I, it's just like... My Storm Guardians killed loads. They yeah. killed so many orcs, so many yeah. uh, guardsmen. They were just plinking away at stuff throughout the weekend. So I was like, <laughs> ha ha, Storm Guardians. Um, so yeah, that was fun, and then just five rangers, just because I didn't have more storm guardians, <laughs> and I had the twelve points to upgrade. So a lot of people take three sets of rangers. That's one hundred and eighty points, whereas storm guardians are twelve points less a squad. So it just meant I was saving points to put towards the jet bike, so I can just squeeze it all in perfectly. Um, actually, the rangers did really well in one game. I played a guy, uh, Joshua Death from America, uh, in round seven, and he had a. Uh, a really scary character which could summon on like it gets plus three it's that harp lady and she can summon herself and then i think she like forces perils or something like that okay. or does mortal wounds to psycho so i was really scared of her and um i shot my five rangers and caused three mortal wounds and wounds and killed her mm. i was like oh okay my rangers actually did something <laughs> so they can do something now and again yeah um, but that wasn't the point of me putting them in. It was just a unit again to hide. Um, and then the flyers, the flyers are pretty much self-explanatory there. But the way I was using them compared to some people that you know, if you were to use this list or face off against this list, uh, is they're very good at blocking. Yeah, really good at blocking. Yeah. This is something I hoped you were going to touch on because flyers, flyer movement blocking, particularly with um, the fact that these guys can turn after they move, is yeah. that's what makes them so good. Mm. Um, do you want to go into a little bit more about exactly what is flyer movement blocking for some of the guys who don't really, or haven't faced against such a horrible thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, say if I was going to run a bunch of gallants against you, what would you do? Um, I'm marching uh, down the board, think I'm going to wreck stuff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the, the, way, the way the meta's evolved is there's less stuff that can fly, right? Um, so we, we see a decline in Smash Captains, an incline in Castaments for that third slot for a guard. Yeah. You see a lot less shield captains, you see a lot less custodes, unfortunately. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so those kind of things really hurt flyers because they're good in combat and they can assault you. Yeah. So my, my thought process was you see a lot of hordes with no fly, none of these characters, so 
fly, um, flyers are really good at blocking because you can't move through them, you can't assault them, uh, you still get that inch gap with the big base. Yeah. Um, so basically for an Eldar flyer it's very easy to do because you can pivot before you move, move and then pivot again. And as you're doing all those movements until you pivot, you ignore enemy models. Okay. So for um, most armies out there, they usually have like a six inch buff or bubble where they want to keep in range. They're quite compact. Yeah. Prime example is uh, Homunculus with grotesques. A um, little ball of death. Isn't a, it? a little yeah. ball of death. Yeah. But they have to stay quite clumped up. Yeah. So you can move three, maybe four flyers, and they don't all have to be Eldar. It's always good to use the razor wings if you can angle it correctly. Yeah. Um, you move within two or three inches. As long as they don't have a crazy amount of smites and things like Demon Princes, for example, hidden in, don't do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't, yeah, don't, don't, obviously, if there's something really grivy like three Demon Princes there, don't do this. But obviously, if you, if you feel like they've only got enough to maybe, maybe kill one flyer, then do it. Because you're stopping them moving. Yeah. Um, you, you move your flyers sort of so that they're facing, um, you know, you can have two facing that way, two facing that way. But position the rest of your flyers so that they're in a position to move back. Uh, and cross over yeah. when the other flyers move out the way, yeah. and and I was I'd like to think I was quite efficient at doing this after a few games of doing it, yeah. where you can effectively stop your opponent moving because they can't move around the f uh, they'd have to move around the flyer which potentially may means they're going backwards, um, moving at all towards you and with my army not being very good in combat and protecting my ground presence, I needed to use those flyers. Yeah. It's just massive board control. You could theoretically even just um, block someone in their own deployment zone, yeah. couldn't you? Yeah, if you go first and they're clumped up, or even a horde of orcs, you know, you don't necessarily have to block them all. You can block them getting to objectives. You can move them, say, two there and one there, and then hmm. leave a gap, say, over here, but then their horde has to go that way. And then you can just do the other side. The and then <laughs> you, yeah, you can then do the other side or just keep them going that way and you push yeah. them to another end. So you can effectively funnel them. You don't necessarily have to block the whole lot. Yeah. Um, and only again, you only do that if you know you can get away with it. Yeah. Um, which I did quite often. That's cool. So ways round it, you know, now we're talking about how to beat it as well, I'd say things like Smite obviously works really well. Mm -hmm. um, I'd, I'd particularly pay attention to where, like, like people like Alex put their flyers because there are they've still got to when they move they can only move 90 degrees can't you yeah so you can theoretically still blow them up with enough if someone's misplaced a flyer particularly towards the edge of the board you can really screw them over because they've over committed exactly. and come quite close so if someone's because there's a lot of moving parts to your list isn't there you yeah. can if you if you lose focus which people do in 40k and part of that is capitalizing on people's mistakes you can Obviously, yeah. you're probably not going to make that mistake, but other people will. I, I did. Because, I, you know, he started a trend now. There's going to be a lot of people taking a million Eldar flyers. Or flyers in general. Yeah. Flyers are very good at the moment. Yeah. Um, but but you know, it just, just if someone's put them too close to the edge of the board, where they're either going to have to go off the board or they can go to one point, you just yeah. stand someone at that one point exactly. and they auto-explode. It's, it's surprising how easy it can be if your opponent does make that mistake of positioning, like you say, by a board edge where... They might not necessarily, if they're straight, obviously they can move 60 inches that way. You can't cover yeah. the whole board. Well, maybe you could. You just pick one or two of them where they've messed up. And yeah. You move, move, move your guardsmen into position and they blow up. Or your orcs or Gene Seal or Cole. Yeah. You know, there's, there's lots of horde armies out there which can do that. Or not even a horde army, just an army that if you look at it and you go, well, that flies out position if I block him here. And the amount of opponents which didn't check, you know, that, that gave me, like, I was thinking, right, I need to kill that unit. If I don't kill that unit, I can't move this flyer. And then they've moved that unit out of the way for me. I'm like, brilliant. Because they've, they've, they've overloaded their thought process on, say, killing that one flyer that's wounded, and they've forgotten about this one, which could just die straight away. So always check. Just take a... Um, while your opponent's moving their flyers, mm. just take a quick look around the board and go, right... He's put that over there. Where can that go next turn? Yeah, I, um, I, I, I actually measure out the arcs. Okay, you can go from there to there, and you'll find you you usually find one of them where the fucked up. You do. Yeah. Um, the other thing you can do is uh, you can actually interact with the move blocking in terms of you can heroically intervene into things because yeah, it's not a charge. Yeah. So exactly. you know if out, if if you put two flies quite wide, uh, quite far apart, you can heroically intervene with your knight into combat, and then you can move because heroic intervention isn't a charge. It's not a charge. 
I don't know if you can do that to a flyer though. No, you're not well, allowed. You can't, you you can't, can't end within an inch. No, right? you're not allowed to charge a flyer. Heroic intervention specifically is not a charge. So are you saying you can fight a flyer in combat? No, you can't fight it, but okay. you can move into it. And because you're within an inch of something, like a knight is, when you when it's your turn, then you can move past the stuff. To get right. Out of oh, okay. So you can. You can actually interact with them by moving okay, that's, forwards. That's, that's an interesting concept. I never really thought that because I just thought you couldn't theoretically do that. No, um, it, but, yeah, it, I guess if you look in the rules, it specifically says you can't charge a flyer. Mm. It's fair game. I don't know. I think that's bending it a bit, but <laughs> <laughs> I'd be upset if you did that on me. But <laughs> that's <all> right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, if it's valid, it's valid. Then yeah, go ahead. Um, yeah. But yeah, I guess that's one way. But even heroically, heroically intervening from characters, you know, sometimes someone will forget, leave a gap. Yeah. Especially space wolf characters that can do it six inches. Other characters can do it six inches yeah. as well. You know, so that the, the flyer player might get a bit trigger happy and go, oh, I'm going to block you and yeah. not think what your army can do so you can catch them off there. But predominantly, like, when you do play the flyers, um, just don't let yourself get blocked. Just accept that you're not going to maybe get your whole army in one bubble straight away. Spread them out a little bit. Put a character here and there yeah. um, so that you do have some movement because you don't want to pin yourself in a, in a, in a bubble, especially now when you know... Um, some missions, you know, you, you just roll and then you go first. You know, whoever deploys, chooses a side, deploys second and goes first or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you've just got to spread out a bit. I, I, you know, the amount of times that people would just go, right, I'll deploy my whole army like in a, in a spearhead and just gave me that <laughs> that chance to wrap their whole army. You know, even yeah. if they put one unit grotesque, say, there, there and there... Um, they might not all you, you can still put like a homunculus here and here so they're all like toughness six or whatever yeah um, but by putting them in one bundle within six inches you've just allowed me to stop you moving yeah. um, so that's just another thing I'd consider and of course the meta has now evolved again um, to flyers so maybe people need to look back and go ah maybe I do need those smash captains maybe I do need those shield captains maybe I do need Custodies! Um, custodians. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm saying all the Imperial stuff, but even Orcs, you know. At the, uh, Storm Boys. Storm Boys, yeah. yeah. Storm Boys are really good. Um, you can take that character who's quite good in combat um, with the jump pack, you know. Uh, what else? All kinds of Xenos, uh, Flyers, you know. Hive Tyrants are quite good um, in combat. They can be good in combat, sorry, if you equip them right. You know, I'm not telling people to change their list completely, but just have a consideration of a unit or two or three. To deal with flyers. Yeah. Um, so I think once a list like yours has done so well, yeah, people are going to copy it. Oh yeah. Well, there was a there was an event at the um, weekend um, where I think three lists were one of them was identical, and two was very similar, slight twists. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that was and that was only I think fifty players. So out of fifty players, three. It's not a lot. It doesn't sound a lot, but three players having almost identical lists and they're. From what I could tell, they were good players as well. Mm. Um, they're going to be up there, so it's you've always got to consider it, you know. Mm. Um, so I, I guess one of the things with your list is how do you stop yourself? Um, were they getting tabled, or how do you stop yourself? Sort of how do you actually score points? Is that is that just your move blocking your opponent? You're keeping your characters in, you know, where they can't shoot them, and then yeah. you're just firing and fading your uh, your scat bikes. People weren't concentrating on my backfield because if you do you're losing your army to my flyers you're not mm. you've got to deal with the flyers you can't just let them shoot you and block you all game you have to deal with them but they're not easy to deal with because if they're not within 12 they're minus two to hit for the elder ones the razor wings still have a feel no pain five plus hundred ball they're, they're not easy to kill <coughs> excuse me um so you have to deal with them and then the jet bikes like you say fire and fade protect mm. them if you need to should, should we go um, a little bit more into how the jet bikes work? Because I think that's... Yes. Uh... <coughs> so, what I did with them is, um, I always hid them, turn hmm. one, because obviously we, we had to roll for first turn. Um, so even if I went second, the, you know, they're only, um, I had the old, old ones, <laughs> so they were quite small. <laughs> yeah. So you could fit like all 18 in a ruin, yeah. um, and you can't get shot, obviously. Um, I pre-measure, especially if I'm playing, say, um, quarters or hammer and anvil, I pre-measure things like mortars or wyverns so that if they are in range, they'd have had to have moved yeah. um, to shoot me, possibly, or if not further. Um, so it meant that 
even those withens on double shooting, you ignore cover relics and things like that from the new stratagem um, in the Vigilus formation, yeah. sorry, um, would have to move and therefore hitting on fives makes a big difference. Um, so that's how I kept them um, mm. not dying really turn one. Uh, and obviously being in cover meant there were three plus saves, they're quite durable. Because you've got such reach on them as well. I yeah, it, they have 16 inch range, 36 inch um, shooting, yeah. so 52 inch. It, um, it, in some ways, you know when people, because I, I guess the things you're worried about are things which shoot out line of <coughs> Yeah. So wivens and so forth. Yeah. Um, I guess, in a way, is it predictable where you're going to put them? Yeah, I mean... Because um, say if you've got one big ruin on your side of the table, you're going to put them in there. Oh yeah. 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 So I, I, mean, I guess that's a way around it, it's like... Either measure your line of sight, ignoring stuff too, the one big ruin on the table, and just accept that either you put them in there and you get shot, or you put them in the open at the back of the board somewhere. Don't yeah, you? and you're pushing me back. That's the thing. But a lot of people with with mortars and withens were were hiding theirs as well because they were worried I'd kill them. Um, because you know, again, neither of us know who's got first turn. Yeah, if they leave their mortars out in the open, it's it only takes it? one. Disintegrate a shot to kill a whole mortar, doesn't it? So yeah. disintegrators kill mortars their front and centre. So I guess that's where he was thinking. What, well, or most of my opponents were thinking when they had mortars and stuff. Like, they need to put it in their ruin to hide, but that mm. ruins further than forty eight. Yeah, so, so it's it, it's difficult. I mean, I, I don't know the setups at LVO, but I guess it's something to think about when you know where. The same thing with hive guard <coughs> or tyranids. You know where they're going to put yeah. them. Every time they just, I, you can see them. They're eyeing up that little ruin, aren't they? Go, ooh, this is great. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Same with reapers. You know they're going to go behind the wall. And and that's why I didn't take the reapers. So reapers are three hundred and twenty points for a kitted out nine man unit. Okay. Um, whereas a unit of nine jet bikes or scat bikes are two hundred and seven. So they're mo just over a hundred points cheaper. I Meaning I can get another like four jet bikes. So really, I'm getting thirteen bikes for nine um, dark reapers, and then I'd need a wave serpent because dark reapers in cover against things like mortars aren't reliable. You might have a two plus save, but every wound counts, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, so you, you're going to have to buy a wave serpent. So you buy a wave serpent, that's another 140 points. Um, now it's a lot more points than 18 scat bikes. Okay. So, so your scat bikes are working. You're using your two CP fire and fade, aren't you? So you're moving them forwards. Uh, one CP. Uh, is it one CP? It's one, one CP for Fire and Fade. We'll check that. But yeah, um, one CP. I'm yeah. pretty sure it's one CP. So you're moving them forwards within six, six inches, is it? Six six or seven inches for Fire and Fade. It's something Seven. Like seven inches. So you're moving them just in front of the wall. You're shooting, yep. and then you're bouncing back. Mm -hmm. And are you using Soul Burst on top of that as well? Was yeah, so I cast a... So uh, well, it might not necessarily be that unit. Mm. It could be the other unit. Um, but whichever unit I need to guide and Soul Burst, I will. And then the other, if if that unit is killing something, but they're either out of line of sight of the thing that can hurt them, or um, nothing's in range of that unit, and the other unit is in range of that stuff and can be seen, I'll fire and fade that unit. Yeah. So it's all about positioning and seeing what you know, especially with the line of sight blocking terrain that you have. Even you're, if you're not right behind it, and say if there's a building here, and you put a unit here shooting that way, but the enemy has stuff over there that can't see, that unit's fine. But this unit over here. I'll fire and fade because yeah. the, the enemy unit that can see them is right in front of them. Yeah. Um, so there's a bit of sort of tactical foreseeing there that you need to do. I, I, guess. I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it's probably a good point to talk about spears because I think that kind of ties in quite well with the uh, so shining spears or something else you'll see in the uh, in quite a lot of lists. Yeah. So I don't think they've gone away uh, as such. Um, no, they're, they're still very much a thing aren't yeah they? Um, at the LVO there was still lots of top tier players using them um, there was a chance where I was going to play off against them and I was worried because mm -hmm. that was the one army I think which beats mine yeah um, uh, because it comes down to first turn if he goes first his spears can fly over and maybe kill two of my flyers maybe three in combat yeah. and shooting and all that stuff whereas if I go first I fly over and kill all his spears even yeah. if they're in a ruin I can just fly around and see them yeah um, so, what ways for us non filthy Yunari players <laughs> have of killing jet bikes? Okay. So talk about your ones at first. What, what are the things you worry about? Because so, we've covered weapons already and ignores cover. Is there anything else you would um, you'd be thinking about? Uh, so, everything obviously that we've discussed with in terms of line of sight ignoring is really good. Um, but the main thing I was worried about was things like that can jump over, like to jump. 
Um, yeah, dark matter crystal, you know, that can jump units over would really limit where I can leave my bikes. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I'd maybe have to use my troops to move out and um, okay. uh, actually sacrifice them, which I didn't want to do. Um, yeah, because because in a way you're like if they're de jumping looters, you you've blocked from one side line of sight, but they can re-angle where they're going to be. Exactly. Yeah. So anything with uh, de jumping looters are really annoying. Um, so I have to get rid of them really early. Mm. Um, there's things like uh, assassins. Okay, assassins, which you've discussed recently. Eversaws. Eversaws are amazing. <laughs> yes. Um, again, like deep striking, they're very scary because. Again, you'd have to he's consider... He's got a skull face, he's got a claw, <laughs> yeah. you know? Just... You can't... The thing is with flyers is, you can block your opponent's army, but you don't You don't necessarily... Because they have to move 20, you can't always block a deep strike unit in front. Not, not can, one little guy as not well. Not one little, one little guy. You, you, you're you not always going to... And, and against spears, spears don't have that luxury. Most Yanari players don't really buy much bubble wrap stuff. Yeah. They don't buy lots of stuff... Um, to really cover the spears wherever they are. As soon as the spears are moved, they're susceptible to that Eversaw charge, which does a lot of damaged infantry. Yeah. Um, so, Imperial players, take one of them. <laughs> and um, no, you can. Every time, every time you can just decide you want your Eversaw. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a thing now. It's a thing. Um, new Gene Sealer Colts, they can pop up within three and shoot, um, be it a character or um, a unit with hand flamers, you know, which um, I'm sure people will start seeing. Gene Sealer Colts will be a thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's it, it, basically anything which can. Uh, oh, the one, the biggest thing I was scared of at the LVO for my bikes, and even if there were um, spears as well, was a, a soul bursting solitaire. <laughs> so a solitaire can move through, you know, walls and enemy infantry. He just jumps mm. over it all. Uh, he can blitz uh, or just double move for like twenty four inches, and then charge, and then attack up to four times yeah. and he'll just wipe out my backfield that was my biggest concern anything that can go through or over flyers and get to my back line like a blood angel captain redeploying things like that that's all the kind of things I'm worried about yeah um, be it with my if I had shining spears or um, uh, the scatter laser bikes of course shining spears are better in combat but if you're attacking first and killing half the unit you've made your points back then happy yeah. days yeah um, and so the other sword blows up it, and he blows it's up. Just got so good. It just, but just, that's a different video. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so anything that can um, either shoot long range, um, a knight obviously shooting over the wall is great, but predominantly you've always got to consider having something either that can ignore out of sight and shoot, yeah. or redeploy or um, come from the board edges and things like that. Yeah. You need something to interact with my backfield, otherwise it's a really easy way, a game where you just fire and fade. Yeah. So in a way, is it better to try and chip away at that backfield from turn one? Just because you've only got storm guardians, you haven't got many things which can screen, have you? Um, so in yeah. A way, so is it worth just taking a few of those shots and go? You know what? I've still got to kill a flyer or two, otherwise I'm going to get table. But setting yourself up for the next turn. Yeah, I guess you can. Because if if you completely ignore your screen, you're just going to keep it there. Exactly, like uh, yeah. the amount of people that just didn't shoot the Storm Guardians and things like that with their chaff shots, like, um, you know, shoot the mortars at those Storm Guardians because yeah. you're not, you might kill one bike in cover. It's not worth it. Kill the Storm Guardians on a 5 plus save or a 4 plus in cover. Yeah. Get rid of them and they go, right, now you have to either use your characters or your bikes as the screen. Yeah. And both of those are yummy. So, um, <laughs> and then you've got combat units which can double attack, so you can potentially charge in like an Orc unit. Yeah. Uh, wait, can orcs double attack? Yeah, they I can. They can, yeah. yeah. Uh, so orcs can charge in. You declare both. You know, say the 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 spears like here. Yeah, you get overwatched, whatever. Um, and then you double attack and maybe pile into that other unit that you weren't necessarily in range of. Yeah. And then you've now killed. Even if you just kill four or five of them, it's like, well, that unit's not a fight. Uh, then because no every loss powerful. matters for you, doesn't oh, it? Oh god, yeah. yeah. So um, things like that. I'm mega worried about if I was using either spears or, or jet bikes or anything yeah. like that that just rely on that backfield not to get hurt um, and of course long range firepower the, the amount of people that were using things that had a 48 inch range that could see potentially see my bikes because there's no way I couldn't stop it um, and would decide to shoot the flyers instead so it's, well, it's, it's almost wasted shots against those flyers because yeah. you, um, the thing with the flyers is you can still um, you can still what's the what's the Eldar jinx called oh Look, um the, yeah, I know the one you mean. Lightning reflex. Yeah, that's where it. you can get another minus one. Yeah, so that's just two CPs. 
um, and, and you just get another minus one to hit. So you can have raised wings at minus two and Eldar flies at minus three to hit. So yeah, I used that a few times as well over the weekend and, and, and was amazed by how useful it was, even at just minus two. <laughs> um, <laughs> it really increases their durability. So yeah, you've got to be considered about that. So every time like that big, big anti-flyer or whatever mm. unit would shoot them, I'd go, well, yeah, lightning free flex, and now you've just wasted your shots. I'd, I'd be more concerned if you shot those flat two damage against the, the, the bikes, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Should we touch on the spears quickly? Because they're, they're almost the same, but they're a little bit different in that they're more durable, I think, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so spears, they have. So shining spears for any of you guys. So they've got. Yeah. They start with a base uh, three up save, don't they? Three up save. Three up yeah. save. Four up in run to shooting. Yep. And it's only shooting. Mm-hmm. Um, now, you stack psychic powers on them if you play them, don't you? Yes. Um, yeah. So you're going to put... Well, you tell me. You're, you're, you're the Eldar expert. I wouldn't say expert. <laughs> but I'll take it. Um, yeah, so you, you tend to say... Um, say? Tend to see uh, a lot of spear armies will have multiple warlock spirit seers and, mm. and far seers, probably Eldrad for the extra... Um, but it, it's fairly predictable what they do each turn. Is yeah. They want to put protect on, don't they? Yeah, you want protect, you want possibly quicken most likely quicken because you want yeah. a double move uh, and you tend to see a soul burst action from them where they either um, move again mm. or what we tend to see more often is they'll um, shoot a unit kill them soul burst and move back yeah behind a wall because they can move 16 inches yeah um, and so, that's something you yeah. don't always see but you expect to see yeah so the thing about Shining Spears is that, although they've got spears, they're actually more of a shooting unit than a close combat unit against a lot of things. Yeah, um, their shooting's actually more threatening in my opinion. And actually the better players tend to play them more cagely in that they will, like Alex said, just literally bring them forwards just into range, soul yeah. burst off something and bounce them back. Correct. And I guess with the second unit you could fire and fade them as well, couldn't you? Well, you don't even bring them out. Um, you know, if you've got two... I mean... Uh, a French player I know, he uh, actually uses three units of spears. <laughs> um, it's horrific. Uh, so uh, what I tend to see spear players do is they'll fully buff up one unit, move them forward, and potentially charge just to wrap something in. Um, we won't go into wrapping, but it's basically where you stop an enemy yeah. unit leaving combat so they can't be shot. Yeah. Um, and leave that unit there. That's against armies which don't have combat. Against yeah. the ones that do have combat, they just bounce back and forward, shoot a unit of, say, 10 Guardsmen or whatever, um, and but there is a way of stopping that. Ooh. There tell me, tell me. Um, we'll tell them. Okay, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that now. Um, one thing you don't see a lot of is when players put things like 10 Guardsmen or something like that, they'll just put them in a clump, just move them forward, or put them in a line, like, spread out, and then move them like that. Yeah, it's, it's because do. they've resigned that they're playing bloody Yanari. And yeah. are they just going to die? And you're well, gonna... not, not just that, it's just they don't think on what yeah, could they, potentially happen yeah. as well. But yeah, <laughs> most of the time you're like, yeah, just, just take them, just, there they are. Them. Yeah. A lot of players <laughs> do will, what you're going to do, yeah. A lot of players will use that sort of either for bubble wrap or protecting their characters or just getting objectives. And that's where they're going wrong. Um, what you should be doing, at least if you have combat, this doesn't work with things like Tau. Tau just take lots of broadsides. But anyway. Um, <laughs> With things like Imperial Soup or even like Orcs where you've got like a unit of 15 Orcs left or um, even a unit of 30, don't go moving them up in a big blob. Spread them out. Now the reason being is when you soul burst, you have to be within range, uh, which is 7 inches, of the last model taken off from that unit. Okay, yeah. And a lot, of, you know, a lot of people forget that, that when they lose the unit they just pick them all up and take them off the board and then their opponent soul bursts because they assume they're within seven. Yeah. Well, actually, that's wrong. Yeah. Do you want to go, go... I actually read up on this, and Alex is right on this because um, I knew you were going to mention this. Um, do you want to quickly explain why, why it works that way? So what the player who's taking the models off should be doing is, say, put them spread out backwards and... Um, or if you've got a small squad of five or ten, put them in a line going backwards uh, where... Uh, opposite to the direction of the United Spears, they're going to come in, they want to be within 12, so they're not going to be too close, and they want to bounce back, right? So as you're taking your models off, you're actually taking them off one at a time. Okay? In the rule book, it actually says you, you remove 
one model at a time. Because you're meant to um, roll one dice at a time. Yeah, right? but, but everyone rolls them as clumps mm-hmm. using the fast but, but dice. But it specifically mm-hmm. says in the rules, this isn't open to interpretation, it specifically says you roll them one at a time and you take save. even says you take saves so, yeah. one at a time. Yeah. Now, in the Yunari FAQ, just, sorry, in the one of the rulebook FAQs, mm-hmm. I think it's getting started into the new edition or some rubbish like that. There's a million FAQs in yeah, you know, know If you're new one. to this, they're, they're just everywhere. It, it specifically says the unit is destroyed when the last model is removed. Correct. Yeah. Um, so by doing that, the way I said, where you remove them one at a time, you take the one at the back at the end, yeah. if they do kill the unit, and now you're out of seven inches. Or they've committed to coming forwards a lot closer than they actually exactly. want to. Exactly. Um, so you can bait your opponent too close, where they kind of have to charge because they can't move mm. 16 inches back, or they can move back, but now they're not behind that wall. Yeah. Because they need that soul burst action just to get out of dodge. But now you can see them. And that is massive. Absolutely massive. Um, and you don't see enough people doing that. You see them clumping up, going, well, there's no other way of deploying. I'm just going to clump my army up mm. and move in blobs. Well, actually, if you spread them out and you see a lot of good players, especially with Horde, you know, spread out to get all the objectives, well, not only by doing that against Yunari, it works well because you can take models off one at a time. Oh, look. The last one's over here who's fearless and you're not within seven and you're not killing him. But if he does for some example, uh, for some reason die or whatever, if he is out of fearless, you're not within seven. Mm. Um, and now that unit is stuck out in the open. Yeah. So why can't you do that with Tau? Tau and other combat, uh, sorry, shooty... Combat not, adverse armies. Combat adverse armies. <laughs> um, can't necessarily do that. Because the soul burst action won't be there because they won't be jump, jumping back. They'll be jumping into combat. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're wanting to pin you in combat. They're going to pin you in, and then from that point of pinning you in, the rest of your army is going to get assaulted next turn because yeah. that um, unit will probably kill them um, in the turn after or move out of combat, soul burst, and charge you again. Uh, so you don't want to do that with Tau, and that's why I was saying earlier, with your infantry, just don't let them get pinned. And that goes... Without saying for other armies yeah. as well, which I was explaining to you with your custodes. Um, so, how how is there any ways you stop yourself getting pinned? So if you've got small units that aren't good in combat, um, just hide them. Yeah. You know, if you don't need them at the front, don't just put them at the front because you don't know where to put them. Just put them in the corner, on that objective in the corner, whatever. Yeah. Just keep them out of the way, um, and or keep them near your combat units. So if you do have custodes or um, gene stealer cults don't leave that unit of five crappy guys in the corner because you're just giving you an extra attack a, an extra round of shooting or yeah extra... you're giving him that that easy way of either soul bursting off that unit to bounce a, a, away yeah. or you're giving him a unit just to pin in combat just so he can't get shot and the next turn he can do what he needs to and react to an objective or something mm. like that don't give him that just keep your army together yeah. where your combat characters or units can interact with those spears because then your spear opponent's worried that now, because you've spread out, but you're t- together with your combat characters, etc., they can't soul burst by jumping and shooting you, and they can't soul burst in combat because they'll be dead. Yeah. Um, so that's that's the best way, sort of, to stop your little units being useless. That's that's, that's really good. Um, so a buffed up unit of spears, it's on a two plus save, yep. three plus in bun, and mm-hmm. usually has a five up field of pain as well. Yeah, with fortune. Yeah. And you can give them lightning reflexes for minus one, can't yeah. you? So they're quite good in against shooting attacks, even if they put them in the open, aren't they? If they get everything off. Yeah. And I think there's there's one small caveat to say is if you can position things to stop them getting all those powers off, that's really good. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll go. We'll touch on that in a bit more later. Um, now, what was I going to say? So yeah, you stop them getting those off. But the other thing is they never get their invent in combat, do they? No. So people are sometimes actually scared to. Fight them, and they're actually not very good in combat. Especially and why? Why aren't they not good in combat when they don't charge? Because they don't double their strength. <laughs> because they're strength three. They're strength three. <laughs> um, they, you know, people just, you know, if you can charge them, turn one or two or whatever, yeah. charge them. <laughs> just they're not that great in combat, believe it or not. Um, the, the, you know, yeah. they, they are very good at what they do because they do it along for a long time and they're very tricksy in where they move and a good KG player will keep them out of combat for as long as they can. Yeah. Um, but if you can get that again, I'm going back to it, things like the Eversaw, things like the Gene Stealers popping up, you know, all these things where as soon as those um, spears are out in the open, charge them, just go for it. <laughs> you know, even charge those Katachan Garza with all those strength four attacks, you'll probably kill a couple, you know. Yeah. It's, 
it's only um, you know even if they are on a four plus save you know throw Stra Strachan in there and battle yeah. them you know don't be scared of charging them like yeah. they're not that great. What, what I tend to do, even if on a two plus save I just imagine the Terminators and then I'm not scared of them anymore. <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of Terminators in 40k. No, apart from Death Watch ones maybe. But. Yeah, <laughs> and Space Wolf ones. Yeah. <laughs> <I love them. laughs> But um, just imagine a nice fluffy ultramarine terminator or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. they're cute, aren't they? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Don't be scared of them. They're just ultramarine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just just charge them with that character of yours, with the power fist, or whatever. You know, just don't be scared of. Because mm. um, if you get that opportunity, because if they've overextended, you're probably not going to get that opportunity the next turn. No. If they've failed their powers, um, look. <laughs> Should we quickly talk about failing powers? Because I think that's that's something which does. Because Eldar's really good until they fail something, don't they? Yeah. And then it all falls apart at once, doesn't it? That's one of the reasons why I didn't take the spear version to LVO was because mm. I felt like it was too reliant on powers at times. Yeah. Um, and I am renowned for failing powers. <laughs> I'm renowned for it. So I just don't trust them anymore. Yeah. Um, but even if they do pass all their you know, powers and things like that, yeah. you, I feel like you need some way to stop it. Yeah. Um, and I, every... I wouldn't say every army, but most armies have some really good way of stopping a power. Um, one example is the Kalexus. The Kalexus now has um, all sorts of abilities. I yeah. don't know of them. I don't know of them off the top of my head. It, it's pretty much the same as it was before. It's got some other funky little side tricks. Does as he well. have like a stratagem where he does some kind of nifty stuff? Or he's got he's got no extra deny powers, but he's just going to make them that a little bit harder. Okay. Um, he's got the minus two, which helps. Um, yeah. I mean, because Eldar are traditionally but... quite quite good at getting off powers because they've got yep. all the buffs to it, they've got re-rolls, they've got all this shenanigans going on. Minus two is pretty big, um, especially against and the And dice warlocks. do go cold. Warlocks, you know, casting on a seven, only you need one of them with a spirit stone gets, that, that relic mm. thing gets the re-roll, so, you know, Kalexis is good, you've got um, Black Templars, okay, and a, I think it's Stygies in Cult Mechanicus, mm. which you weren't aware of, um, have a four plus deny. Um, any unit within 24 that casts a power and scouts can go forward, Stiges just run forward, mm. uh, can deny on a 4 plus and you can reroll it yeah. with a CP reroll. So why is scouts tend to be one of the better ones to use because you yeah. can position them 9 inches away from your yeah. enemy. So even on turn 1, yep. I'm, four, I'm 4 up on denying a power on you because I've got a 24 inch range on that. Yeah. So you, you don't see it, you don't see it um, at all. Because no one who takes Black Templars. <laughs> um, but it's it's one of those detachments which um, are surprisingly good. You know, you can have your own version of a Smash Captain with a Vigilist detachment. Have a look at that. Yeah. Um, a Swords Master or something. Yeah, like yeah. That, they get yeah. extra attack. They get yeah. extra attacks on sixes. Um, yeah. They, 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 there's a stratagem. Um, I can't remember what it is, um, but it's quite good. <laughs> um, oh yeah. Head. It's great. <laughs> Um, but then you get access to those scouts um, yeah. and and Cult Mechanicus. You're going to be seeing them more often, I think. Yeah, uh, they've got surprisingly nice efficient now. Very they? efficient, yeah. and they've got access to a four plus deny in one of the um, uh, chapters. I don't know what they're called. <laughs> <laughs> um, robot chapters. Forge worlds. Forge worlds. That's yeah, it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they've got access to that deny. Um, trying to think mm. even having a um but yeah you only need to make these guys fail one or two powers yeah. at a time because you know the whole army the reason dark reapers are so efficient and things like that is because they're actually all the buffs yeah yeah and they're, they're kind of relying on the fact they're moving the spears forward they think they're going to quicken them again and suddenly they're out of range they're stuck out in the open if you've just denied it yeah, yeah they're just, just stuck there in the middle of the board and people forget, especially those scouts, you know, people yeah. literally don't even think of that stratagem. Because yeah. it's a stratagem, it's not ability, and unless you're asked, you know, you're not going to ask, oh, what do the Black Templars do? Oh, they just do... You're, gonna ask, you're probably going to ask about everything but what the scouts do, because they're scouts. Yeah, exactly. And if you hide them, people just forget about them. Yeah. So people yeah. need to, uh, you know, people will make mistakes, um, and you've got to capitalise on having that little trick in, in, in your list, you know, whether it be that Kalexus that's going to pop up and be a, a harassing those psychos at the backfield or the Black Templar Scouts or whatever, you know, it's it's always good to have some kind of deny. Um, and uh, Or snipers. Yeah. Um, you've got m more and more snipers coming out. You've got the new um, Space Marine ones, uh, which are really good. The heavy support ones, they're yeah. awesome. Um, Vindicare's getting better. Vindicare's gotten better. Didn't yeah. get worse. No. I don't think that was possible, but he's got better. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's actually surprisingly good now. He is actually quite good. I wouldn't... 
Yeah. He's, he's not... He's not amazing. No, but I mean, 85 points, he's, he's not an Eversol. Yeah. Or a, but, you know, actually... <laughs> nothing's an Eversol. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, he is good. You've got um, Holocrins. They've got the Death Jesters, which can pick out characters. Yeah. They're really efficient at killing those Warlocks and things like that. Um, rattlings, you know, no one really takes Rattlings, but I've, I really like Rattlings. Yeah, yeah, they've got their own little fire and fate. Exactly. Thing, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so they're really good. Um, you've got all these new... There's two characters with sniper rifles from the Gene Sealer Colts as well. One that does... Um, what one with the pistols, isn't it? Or... Well, there's the pistol... No, that's the third one. Yeah. The pistol guy is really good. Yeah. But he's only 12-inch range, so... But he can pop up within nine, and even if you've got your character, if he's within three of that bubble wrap, he's getting shot. Yeah. Six shots, which gives you an extra shot for every hit. Hits on twos. Strength four, minus one, two damage. Yeah. Um, so he can snipe characters. So there's plenty of ways to snipe characters and, and, and psychic powers. You know, cast your own psychic powers against them. Um, you know, uh, yeah, see how they out. like it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> um, so. Uh, but actually, Space Marines have a lot of ones to make a unit minus one to hit. And you can stack yep. a lot of those up with the Space yep. Wolves and the Dark Angels. Exactly. And suddenly, yeah. um, now those spears aren't doing anything. Yeah. Um, so there's. And there's still got a second things. unit of spears. Yeah. Or third. Yeah. yeah. But you know, why do you know spears? Yeah, so there's there's ways and means that you need to consider when you're building your list on like right a lot of people just forget about characters and all these buffs coming from characters. Homunculus for, for Dark Eldar, for example, really good. They give those buffs to those yeah. uh, you know, the plus one strength and, and toughness from the the Urian Rakath or whatever his name is. No one snipes him out. And it's like if you get rid of him, those Talos or Grotesques are nowhere near as strong yeah, as Yeah, we were talking about this in the How to Beat Dark Eldar video we did. It's just, the ability to target characters is massive. Oh god, yeah, it's, really big. It makes, you know, armies just fall apart without mm -hmm. them. Well, um, things like the Patriarchs giving everyone Fearless and um, Abaddon giving all the cultists Fearless. You know, if you, okay, Abaddon's a bit harder to kill than most characters, uh, but if you have, you know, stuff there, you know, be it 15 Rangers or Scouts or whatever, Use them, you know, just go for it. Over because... two turns, he's dead. Exactly. Yeah. You know, things. Sni snipers, most snipers do more wounds on sixes, and, and the, the more of, you, of them that you have, the more chance that you're going to. Yeah, you only need to roll hot one of one of those, just a bunch of sixes, and yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's Easy. gone. He's dead. Problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> just Easy. roll sixes in yeah. life, generally, with them. Man, he's really good at that. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, um, so, yeah, you, you know, you just if you've got the chance take it but yeah. you won't get a chance unless it's in your list so. yeah yeah it's just um, building that your list to give you chances exactly you've just got to have okay. that chance so so what what other units do you think you see in your in your nari quite a lot so we mentioned the dark reapers uh, yeah i think we should touch um, on them because they, they tend to be played in a very very generic way don't they yeah um, they tend to eight or nine in a wave serpent yeah. or if not just hidden at the back of the board but yeah. you tend to see them in a wave serpent nowadays yeah. um, um, and and particularly that that build they're going to put the wave serpent near the one ruin in their deploy and you know where they're going to put those reapers don't you you just know where they're going to put if them. i'm perfectly honest with you if if, if your opponent has a ruin you're not going to alpha strike them don't even bother uh, you're not going to kill that wave serpent. They're, they're, wave serpents are so hard to they're kill. They're just so annoying, aren't they? Yeah, they're, they're so hard. They've got so many wounds. Toughness seven. Again, they can lightning fast. Reflex. Yeah. Stupid. If thing. they're a, a latok, they're minus two to hit anyway. Yeah. Um, or because minus they'll put the a latok wave serpent can still take the Yunari. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. they will be an, an extra minus one. Um, so it's like, just don't bother unless you've got a Castellan that can actually see it. You know, something that could kill it, even if it's yeah. minus one. And let's face it, only half the lists out there have a custom. Only half, yeah. The yeah. other <laughs> half are Yanari, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I just wouldn't bother with them turn one. Just accept that the Dark Reapers are going to hit you. Yeah. Um, but make sure you've got something, again, in your army that can hit the backfield, yeah. so... Okay, so they, they start in the Wave Serpent. Yeah. They come out, they position themselves behind the wall, they do the thing we talked about before, so they move forwards, they bounce back with their stratagem. Yeah. If you can deny the stratagem... There's two, army. there's two armies that can do it now, so yeah, yeah you can deny that stratagem and it's worth it. You know, Gene Seed of can only do it once now, but to stop them and leave them out in the open is worth it. Yeah, because they'll be out of cover, they'll just... They'll yep. just... Um, Toughness 3 space elves do not last long. No, no, not <laughs> out of cover at least. No. <laughs> in cover, they're a bit more durable, but... Yeah, um, again, it comes down to ignore line of sight stuff and deep striking or um, things which can re redeploy. That's the only way, really, with a fire and fading unit reapers that you can deal with them. You've got to wait for your opponent to make a mistake. Yeah. Um, oh. It's just very... 
it's a cagey you know unit um, because of the fire and fade. The yeah. fire and fade is so good on them. That and, and the way it works, guys, is they're going to have your rain or someone else there, and she's going to do the word of the phoenix for the soul yep. burst. So that's double shooting reapers mm. in their game. Otherwise, they're probably not quite worth the points, are they? No. no. Um, but they they will be very predictable where they deploy. And they're very predictable what they're going to do with that deploy. Exactly. Yeah. Um, is that they're going to have a screen around those Reapers. And it's actually quite an investment, isn't it, to actually have one unit of Reapers doing that in terms of both CP and in terms of keeping that screen, having the Wave Serpent there. Um, but yeah, you just know that it's going to happen. Your opponents have invested a lot of points in that unit. Yeah. Um, you've got the Wave Serpent, the unit itself, your Vrain, the Bubble Wrap. There's a lot of points for that one unit, and don't get me wrong, it's worth it because when they do pop off, they pop off. Um, but they tend to kill the bigger stuff, and actually, that's why I moved to the scat bikes because I felt statistically they're not as good. Mm. Um, but yeah, they they're just a pain. Um, the other thing I found, which is quite interesting to do, is if you do get to place objectives, is um, place them anywhere but in that ruin. Yeah. Um, oh, because yeah. you know your your opponent's going to deploy it in one of two places on the board, probably. Yeah. Um, so if you can find a way of blocking out with your objective placement where he's going to have to be, because what you don't want is a bunch of Reapers sitting on an objective, scoring points and killing you. You don't want anything hidden behind a wall, yeah. scoring points. So, so in a way, you have to make them choose between either killing stuff or scoring points. So if yeah. you manage to make them deploy on one side of the board where there's no objective... Yeah, that helps massively, because even if it's not the Reapers, it'll be something else that especially in a progressive mission, yeah. that will need to come out and, and score that objective. And, and me personally, when I deploy objectives, I consider whether it's worth giving my opponent that chance of hiding a unit or um, not. Mm -hmm. Now, don't, obviously, if my opponent puts one there and he gets to pick sides, okay, I tried. But I try and tend to put them out of three of a wall, where I know my army might have to, unless my army specifically needs to be hidden by an wall as well, mm. I won't risk it. I'll just put them out in the open and go, well, if you want to score that, you have to be out in the open with whatever it is, a wave serpent, guardians, whatever is out there, I, w I want it Yeah, just, just don't play into their game. Yeah. I, think that's, I think it's really important to do that. Yeah, um, exactly. Because you know what, if you've got the objectives, you know, they still need line of sight to shoot you with apart yeah. from one of their guns. Um, so... Exactly. Make make it a way that they actually have to come to you. Mm. Yeah, you can. You can also. I mean, it doesn't always work, but the things they want to hit, you can keep out of that range. Um, they've got forty eight inch range plus a seven inch move, and then they can seven inch back. So it's fifty five inch range. But sometimes, like things like a castle, if you yeah, if you put that castle in the corner in Hammer and Anvil, the opposite end of where their reapers are. Because mm. don't forget, you know where these reapers are going. Yeah. We, we, you, you and, unless there's just like loads of terrain, you know where those reapers are going. If so those just... reapers want to hit your big, big thing, uh, <laughs> 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 well, um, then they, you know, force them to move out of that corner. Uh, don't give them that seven inch move back. And one thing is always be, always double check because sometimes they'll move out in a way where. You know, they won't move exactly seven inches forward. They might move seven inches round. Yeah. Um, and they might not actually get every model back in behind the wall. Yeah, only takes um, one. Only, only takes one. Yeah. So always just double check what your opponent's doing because they might have positioned one where at a certain angle you could see him, but he's moved him out at a different angle um, where he'd have to sort of move around a model, say a character that he's left there, like your Vrain. Your Vrain might be there, he's moved that way and he mm. wants to kind of move back around that way he might not be within the wall. So try and bait them out in different angles and things like yeah. that. And I think I think that goes back to one of the things is capitalising on your opponent's mistakes here. Because yep. I think if a Yanari player plays a perfect game, this probably it's difficult. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. Um obviously you didn't do that in your last game. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Far from perfect. Um, um. <laughs> we just teasing it. <laughs> I'm never ever gonna do that one. <laughs> um, but actually I think if someone plays an army which is so powerful as Inari with such a high skill cap, um, I think there's less room something. for takes backsies. <laughs> yeah, so I, I had an instant at a tournament um, where... Uh, I just think there is. I, 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 had, a, I had a tournament where um, I played a Inari player and um, I was using Tao and he made two big boo-boos mm. uh, where he forgot to do um, a stratagem to first of all fire and fade his reapers and second of all to advance and charge 
which he already advanced and charged mm. his spears. Oh, we should mention that, by the way, advance and charge, because I think that's another... Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's, so, it's so natural to me, I forgot to even mention it. Yeah, I um, just assume. <laughs> um, I think that's just part of being a tournament circuit. So long, we come, come across it, but... Um, I'll come back to it in a sec. Yeah. But yeah, I basically let him, you know, I was a bit like, mm, should I... And I let him go back and, and, and say that he did these stratagems. Now... Looking back, it cost it cost me the game. I lost the game because of that. But if I didn't let him do that, and you know, because he didn't enact the strategy when it should have been done, um, I could have killed his reapers and his spears in one go, and it would have been game changing. Yeah. So, it, I would tell you know anyone else to not let your opponent do that because not because you're being that guy, but you need some breathing room. You yeah, know, if, if they've got that army, you want them to. I think you know if my only win condition is that. You don't play your perfect game. Yeah, okay. which some armies will have to. And you know, there's a certain skill cap to playing Space Marines versus playing Yunari because yeah. there's a lot more combos and things. And you know, you're a very fragile glass cam cannon army. And if you make a mistake, and that's my only way I can beat you, I don't think that you know it's part of the skill of 40k is you not making mistakes, isn't it? Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah, so but there's a fine line with these things, isn't there? And you don't yeah. want to come across as unsportsman. I mean, the guy I was playing is a good friend of mine, a uh, really good player, yeah. and I, you know, I let it go. But obviously, looking back, if I really, really wanted to win, and it was like the final of a GT, which it wasn't. It was, it was the fourth game out mm. of five, um, and I wasn't in contention. I, I let it off. If it was the final of a GT, and yeah. I'd probably go. To be honest, sorry, you know, you've, yeah. you've moved on now. You've not done it. I, I apologize, but. I can't let you just do it because I need to capitalise on this, right? Yeah. If, if there was a way about playing it, which not every army can do against Yunara because they have every trick in the book, yeah, you kind of do have to fall back on that and go, look, I can't... I, I think it's probably having that conversation at the start and go, you know what? Yeah. Um, you're playing agree. the most broken army in the game. Yeah. If you make a mistake, I'm going to capitalise on it. It's definitely something you both should... A conversation you should have at the beginning. You know, one, one thing I say is, um, you know, let's play a, 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 a fair game... Where, but you know, take backs is in the same phase. So, for example, if you forgot, if you've moved a unit, but you want to move them actually over here, that's fine. It's in the movement phase. But if you moved on, or, or, or you've moved to say the psychic phase, it's too late. Yeah. Um, and that's the, the conversation I'll have. And if my opponent's got qualms about that, you know, we'll discuss it and how he wants to play that. You know, you, you come to a mutual decision. You know, some uh, one player I think I know who actually says, right, we can have one take back and that's it. Yeah. Um, which is fair. And there's other players who will just. Want you to play completely like solid. Those games tend oh, to be more too stressful. It's far too intense. Uh, far too intense. It doesn't matter whether you're at the top table or the bottom table. I don't like those kind of games. Mm. Um, you uh, know, it's uh, not because uh, I'm sloppy, but it's because you, we just want to. I don't like winning on technicalities. You no. know, oh, you you did that. I got gotcha. you. You know, you no, don't. You never want a gotcha moment. Yeah, no. Um, um, you want to play a clean, fair game against Shinari, however. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe less so. <laughs> um, um, so yeah. Um, nothing else really to add apart from going back to that advanced thing. Yeah, should we quickly touch on that? Because I think that's an important part of the spear list, isn't it? Yeah. Is that they have to advance. When, when they advance, the, the way Yunari works essentially is that you're not just Yunari because that would just be really boring, wouldn't it? You yeah, know, that's it wouldn't just be not, overpowered that's at not all. fair enough. <laughs> yeah. um, so you get to be Yunari, plus you get to be Samhan in this case. Or Bealtan, but I'll yeah. go into that in a minute. Um, so, um, yeah, so. You don't get their chapter tactic as such. No, you get their stratagem though. Yeah. Um, you get access to their stratagem. So Sam Han's one is you can advance and charge. Yeah. Um, so it makes that really fast unit even faster, yeah. especially when they move twice and they get an auto six advance. Yeah. And then they can move up to three times, can't they? Because you can soul burst them, quicken them, and move them. And each time they can uh, advance. The first time I saw a unit spears do that, I literally felt like flipping the table. Sixty six inches. I couldn't isn't believe it? how quick. <laughs> And then they charge, it's just ridiculous. Yeah, I couldn't but, believe that happening. But that's a movement phase strategy, isn't it? It's when they charge. It's when they advance. When they it's not advance. when they charge. Yep. So they run up the table and go, well, it was three phases ago. Mm. <laughs> exactly. And, and, and again, you don't want to be that guy, but you're like, well, sometimes, you know, you might not even realise what they're doing. You could just be thinking, oh, they're just trying to block me, or I mean, very unlikely, but it's not your job to go, Oh, by the way, you know, at the start of your turn, you probably don't should forget have done that. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, because I just to utterly smash me. Don't it's, forget. It's happened to me before. I've forgotten to fire and fade a unit, and I've gone, oh no, like, what can you do? You've made a boo boo. You've got to accept it. Yeah. Other times where you, you know, it's the same phase. You're like, you've moved on, and you're about to start your shooting phase. You go right. Yeah. I'm going to shoot this unit. 
oh, by the way, you know, that's fine. But like, like you say in the assault phase, you're like, wait, you've had plenty of that ample time to run. Yeah, you, you, you've seen exactly what you've killed. You can move somewhere exactly. different based that's upon that, and the game's completely yeah. changed. You can't then go on. No. Yeah, I, th so. I think at some point you've got to own your own errors. Yeah, um, and learn from it. Yeah, uh, but it's, it's a different video, and it's something that at some point we're going to sort of go into a bit more because mm. it is it is important. It's definitely definitely important. Um, um, the other unit uh, is BL Tan, or the other stratagem, sorry, and that is add two to your charge range. So that means a unit can. Uh, effectively, you'll see a unit of Sam Han and a unit of Biel Tan. The Biel Tan one will deep strike, and the mm -hmm. unit of Sam Han will be on the board. Okay, and uh, the reason for that is sometimes you can't hide eighteen to sixteen bikes in in one corner, um, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so you'll deep strike one unit, and that unit tends to be Biel Tan. Um, or you'll just take the Biel Tan anyway and just deep strike that unit all the time. And I guess it's um, quite reliable, 7-inch seven charge. 7-inch charge, yeah. um, and you can reroll one of them with a CP reroll if you if you have that CP spare, um, which I'm sure they will. Um, and yeah, that that's another reliable way of getting them into combat where you need them. Um, really hard to counter with a 7-inch charge, um, and sometimes people forget that they're even there because they're so focused on teaming with that one spear unit and Dark Reapers that they forget about the other unit of spears. So. Yeah. There's two other units I want to quickly touch on because I know this video is getting on. Is um, yep. Guardians yep. and um, people have been running Wraith Blades as well. Is that a thing? I think that's an American thing. Is it? I, I've seen some Wraith Blade units over in America. I saw a couple of lists at LBO, yeah. but I've not seen it here um, because I don't rate them at all. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I'd rate them like with the Vigilus detachment, mm. uh, which meant that they could soul burst, get all those extra attacks. They were durable. Not a thing, yeah. <laughs> They're too slow. Okay. They can't. They, you can quicken them, but they move five, I think. Um, they can't advance and charge. They just move ten. Um, they're really easy to block with flyers. <laughs> <laughs> just bring uh, more flyers. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I don't think they're durable enough. Um, mm. Because if you do go that detachment, they're not Unari, so they're not double attacking. Mm. Yeah, they're okay, I guess. There are a lot of points though. I think they're like forty points a model. Okay, so they're um, just. Um, you might see them, some people might play them, I know uh, a couple of people have been talking about them but I've not seen them on the table yet. To be fair, I've not play tested them just from what I've seen. What there's they can better do, options is that. There's better options yeah. for the points. Um, okay. And, and if you do, do do see it, try and get rid of them early before they're buffed. You know, you don't want yeah. them protected, you don't want them... So it's the same you. thing as the Shining Spears, just shoot them when you get them. Yeah, and uh, they are a bit more scary in combat, but if they go swords and... Or axe and shield, uh, they tend to be a bit more scary and durable. But if they go double swords, just charge them. They're, they'll drop to any good combat unit. Yeah. Um, okay. And the last thing to touch on is the guardians, because I think they're a little bit different because they get a four up in run book save, don't they? A guardian blob dropping in. Three up, potentially. Is it? Ooh. With protect. Because I think they get the four plus and vulnerable from the stratagem. Yep. Yeah. And they can protect them, so they get a three plus one ball and, and feel no pain. And feel no pain. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, they're. Um, then all the usual jinx doom. Yeah, uh, yeah. They're, they're, um, they're a, soul burst. Do it all again. Another unit which people forget about. You know, someone will put them in the sky and not drop them until turn three. Yeah. Um, drop down and then double shoot them. Um, with loads of shots, guided, all that good stuff. Um, and it's something to be aware of. You know, and there is. To deep striking, to deep any deep striking unit, whether it be guardians or um, gene sealer coal or guardsmen, uh, well, guardsmen can't deep strike. But my point is, anything that can appear, yeah, they can appear from the board edge. You know, they <laughs> yeah, can. They're, they're, that there is, is true. A that is true. I think it is. Um, you know, deep striking smash captains, things like that. You always need to consider your bubble wrap and push it away from the stuff that you're scared of getting hurt. Uh, Death Watch, prime example, really good at deep yes. striking down. They have 24 inch range, whereas Guardians only have 12, so it's a lot easier to stop them. Yeah. But if you don't and you forget about it, they are going to drop yeah. down and really hurt you. Um, so it's one of those multi threat lists where you've got the Guardians to consider, you've got the Spears to consider, and you've got the Reapers to consider. If it's all in one list, that's where the sort of multi um, hammer blows are coming from. Yeah. And it's something that is not always difficult, uh, easy to block. But you've always got to remember and, and ask your opponent, like, right, what, what do they do? What's their maximum damage output? Okay, they, that can hurt my knight or that can hurt that unit yeah. of um, Bulgrins or whatever that you've got. Um, so, so keep them back a bit. Um, and, you know, there's no counter as such to them because they're deep striking. Um, but when you see them in a list, 
Um, just remember that that unit will be deep striking. They only have a 12 inch range, so make sure that you position your bubble wrap of, of chaff at the front, push them forwards, um, and keep your good stuff at the back, 12, uh, th a further three inches behind that nine inch line. Yeah. Um, do you have um, any advice on how to generally play against the whole army of Yunari? Have you got any overall game <laughs> strategies? Uh, do you try and outscore them? You, you, do you try and just um, kill all their scoring units, or do you try and like just try and take out the damage dealers first? Or it depends what you're. The problem is you can never. I, I know you know. Obviously, it's it's match up dependent. A lot of these. Of things, course, it? it's match dependent, table dependent, mission dependent. But ultimately, it comes down to what your opponent gives you, because your opponent's not just going to give you their destroying spears. They're not just going to give you their dark reapers. Um, you've got to play the mission, consider the threat of what they can hit and like I said to you where you're reducing the threat of the soul burst so deploy your models in a line yeah. so they're not getting soul bursted so easily don't give them that easy charge where they're wrapped always consider that those spears will go anywhere so don't you know you see so many people forget about the five man unit on the side just keep them wrapped or spread out hidden um, and make sure your character is in a position which they can either heroically intervene or charge next turn and deal yeah. with those spears. Um, and play the mission. You know, concentrate on the mission. And as soon as you're given something, make sure it's dead. Don't go, oh, I'll just shoot a little bit of that and then a little bit over there and hurt that, uh, shoot that flyer because some some um, some lists have razor wings or, or hemlocks and things like that. Yeah. Um, just to give them, you know, some more. Don't bother with them. They're annoying. But they're nowhere near as threatening as the spears and the reapers. Yeah, so it's just getting your target priority down before the game, and then obviously playing it out as the game yeah, goes on. Exactly. Um, I think another thing which we didn't touch on, which is important when we're talking about overall game plan, is just remember that Yunari players they've got access to different codecs which will all have redeploy techniques in them as well. Yeah. So if something looks too good to be true, it is too good to it be is, true, yeah. and they're baiting you to being out of position yourself so that they can correct. So that they can move, because it happens after the game starts, doesn't it? So yeah. Can... So sometimes you'll see a Yanari player put, and and you'll be able to spot it because it's three units, right? It's three units that can be redeployed. If they put a unit of spears, uh, a wave serpent, and then just one of their characters over there, and then the rest of the army over here, like the rest of the buff characters, especially, or if they're in the wave serpent, fine. Um, it's a bit strange that there's one shining spear unit with like no buffs near them. It's most likely that they're either going to move those three units over here, or if there's only three units here, they're going to move over there. Okay, so don't put your whole army <laughs> just to shoot that one side because they're going to redeploy yeah, so over to the other side. They're effectively going to null deploy you if you just go yeah. for one side, or um, make half your army and just not be able to shoot them. Yeah, sneaky. Aren't they? And and don't yeah. null deploy them and then give them first turn thinking, oh, I'm out of range of that buffed up spear unit because then they'll redeploy, and then just hit your null deployment. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's the funny thing is there's no counterplay. You've just got to spread your army a little bit and, out. And just know um, that it's going to happen. And know that it's going to happen. Um, but keep your army more centralised so that you might not... Don't expect to alpha strike them. They're so hard to alpha strike with terrain. If there's good line of sight blocking terrain, you're never going to alpha strike them because they redeploy and all that shenanigans. Just, just go for the push, get the objectives early, and prepare to counter what they do. Yeah. Because they, they don't score as well on missions as some armies, do they? Not if not early. They're no. more of... Well, they can do it early if they put pressure on you, if they go out for the all-out yeah. with their Shining Spears and things like that. Um, but, you know, um, sometimes you can bait them. You know, you bait, bait them in to, to hitting you over here, um, and then, you know, you can deal with the other Spear unit or something else. You know, put pressure on their backfield, throw that Smash Captain on their... Um, you know, uh, what do you call them? Dark Reapers at the back, yeah. and start killing your stuff, because then they've got to go back... Um, you know, it's it's tricksy, um, and you've got to be tricky back and give yeah. them options. Right, what do I need to deal with yeah. first? Because essentially, they're going to have to. You can't even table people nowadays with the new uh, chapter approved. But you know, they they're, they're effectively have to kill you to a certain extent that they can move all their quite squishy units forward. So yeah. they so yeah. they they will castle up turn one two. So if you push forwards, if you've got scoring points early, they're going to be hard pushed to catch you. Mm. Yeah, and use. Use that line of sight to your advantage. You know, Dark Reapers, they've got one gun that can, you know, people are scared of that Exarch launcher. It's okay, but it's not the end of the world. It's those Reaper launchers. And, and um, if the 
if the jet bikes do want to shoot you, give them that chance to shoot you, but they have to be really close. Yeah. And again, you know, spread your models out so if they do soul burst, um, it they can't. Um, so you know, just the, use that terrain to your advantage. Yeah. Um, you know, utilize it and try and if they are going to go for that shot, they have to go around the terrain rather yeah. than just sit there and bounce back and forward. Um, oh. Yeah. Anyway, I think that's enough. Now I'm starting to feel bad for you, Nari players. I think we've given everyone too many, too many. Nah, no, we don't yeah. feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, um, that's it for today. But um, hopefully, you liked it. We've got loads of other videos on the channel, all going over trying to make you a better 40k player. We've done an excellent one on uh, Dark Elder. Manny's been on recently. He's done one on how you beat Tao. Yep. Um, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks That's a lot, why Alex. I stopped playing town. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meta changing stuff. Right? <laughs> and uh, big thanks to Alex for coming along. You've been awesome at this, and I've learned a lot of stuff just uh, chatting to you today. Cool. Thanks for having me, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you again when yeah. I start a new army. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care. See you later, guys.